questions. And now I will introduce my friend Helen Aino, who will give our first talk on, I can do it, integrality properties of topological fundamental groups. So thank you very much, uh, Akshay. And thank you very much for the kind invitation to participate in the conference to celebrate the uh, 100th anniversary of Femi Noether's key concept of Noetherian rings and to give the opening uh, address. Emi Noether belongs to the pantheon of abstract mathematics. In his New York Times obituary, Einstein says that algebra is an area in which the most gifted mathematicians have been busy for centuries. And that Emi Noether discovered, he said, methods which have proved of enormous importance in present day development of mathematics, mathematicians. I would say she discovered concepts rather than methods, and that they are important in present day mathematics rather than for present day mathematicians. On the other hand, the phrase, the phrase of Einstein hints at one fact, Eminator has been of exceptional generosity with her ideas, which are traced back in other people's articles. She died of cancer in 35 at age 53 in the United States, where she had immigrated in 33 due to the racist and anti-Semitic laws passed in Nazi Germany. She could no longer teach in Göttingen. At this time, two of her three brothers had died of natural death in a young age in Germany. Fritz, the middle one, a renowned applied mathematician, had escaped Nazi, Nazi Germany going to the Soviet Union where he found a position at Tomsk University, also in 33. He was arrested in 37 by the Soviet secret services and executed in 41. Eminator was not offered a position at the Institute of Advanced Study. She found a teaching position at the Women's College Bryn Mawr which Akshay uh, just mentioned. She had no one to talk to on mathematics there. She gave regular lectures at the IAS. At the IAS, she even had difficulties to get her trips back and forth reimbursed. This is very instructive to read the letters displayed in Fall Hall, written by Oswald Veblen, a Zen professor, to try to fix this. Eminator died in the United States of America, likely from isolation and sorrow as well. So I'm going to talk on a concept which uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, predates the concept of Eminator of Notarian rings. So that's uh, groups of, uh, which are finitely presented so uh, that means groups which have finitely many generators. And when we look at the kernel, uh, at the relation subgroup of the group of generators, uh, of the free group of generators on finitely many letters, then this normal subgroup is itself finitely uh, generated. That doesn't depend on the presentation. So it's a way easier concept at the same time, because there is much less structure, it's much harder to apprehend. And uh, so I'm really sorry for the boards. That's the best we can have uh, for the light here. So I will try to write uh, with big letters. And if you cannot see, you can tell me. So uh, just by uh, basically the very definition, if a pi is finitely presented, I will abbreviate this FP. This is equivalent to saying that pi is a fundamental group of a finite CW complex. Based at some point. That is basically by definition, but uh, what uh, is our topic here is that if X, now we do algebraic geometry, complex algebraic geometry, so if X is smooth, Quasi projective over the field of complex numbers, and we look at the underlying topological space. 
and maybe I should assume that it is connected. Then it has a homotopy type of a finite single complex, and consequently, this final one here is finitely presented. So this is a subclass among the category, if you like, of fin finitely presented groups. There is a, a subclass here, uh, which consists of, of those finitely presented groups which come from geometry. Let us just say here that it comes from geometry. So uh, it's a very natural question. And it's a very classical question to try to find how to distinguish. So, of course, you could ask how to characterize those finitely presented groups which come from geometry. The geometric ones. But uh, it's a very, uh, I mean, it's a very ambitious question. And in fact, we have already no tools uh, to address this question. As far as I'm aware of, we don't even have a conjecture, a clear cut conjecture. So uh, a more modest question would be to find, to ask for finding obstructions. So here's the situation is better, and let me uh, give you a few examples. It's better, but it's very weak. So let me give you a few examples. So for example, a finitely uh, presented group, the easiest one is a free group on finitely many letters. So then we know it is indeed because we understand the fundamental group of uh, algebraic curves, our final projective, we can say that this is really the by one of some uh, affine curves. And in fact, uh, we can even specify, for example, if the number of uh, letters here is n, we can take q1 minus n points, and that's going to do it. So uh, this is good. Cool. Now, uh, if pi is uh, finitely generated, in fact, finitely, uh, finitely presented, in fact, finitely generated would be enough. We can also look at the maximal abelian quotient, then by the fundamental group of uh, finitely uh, generated modules over Z, well, data can rings, uh, then uh, we can uh, write this as Z to the uh, non canonically, but we can write it as Z to the power B plus the final group. And uh, this one is geometric. I mean, uh, this final group has to be a million, of course. It's geometric uh, because uh, Z is a fundamental group of the complex point of G. And uh, we have a Clement formula for, uh, for the fundamental group. And uh, thanks to the work of Serge, here we know that any finite group is a topological fundamental group of uh, uh, quasi projective uh, smooth uh, variety. So uh, this yeah, is. Uh, sure. so, so before you, was, you, you had X things. Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, but, sorry, I take it back. I, I'm okay. just wondering if, if you can do it with a quasi projective writing, can you also do it with a smooth projective writing? So uh, let me address this question immediately. So uh, this was the next uh, remark. So thank you for uh, reminding me. So uh, if uh, we were um, requesting X to be projective, and in classical literature, uh, one talks on Keller groups. So it goes even beyond the projective set, we would have to request a B to be even here. And that would be the only obstruction for this part here. And uh, so B even, so if X projective, so B even, and this is a consequence of Hodge theory. So, uh, so you will see later on that uh, one of the main points here of the discussion is that uh, we don't um, 
we, we don't restrict ourselves to uh, proper varieties, and that makes the problem way harder. But uh, still, of course, it's a legitimate question. And uh, in fact, we can generalize here this, um, this observation here by looking more generally at the only potent completion. And uh, if you look at the only potent completion of, uh, of a geometric group here, then uh, by uh, an observation of uh, Bellinson, then it is the same as the fundamental group. Now one has to enlarge a little bit the category in which uh, we discuss here. It's a topological fundamental group of a simplicial scheme, which is constructed starting from X here. And, uh, and then as a consequence, it has a mixed hot structure, uh, from Tokyo mixed hot structure. And uh, before this construction of Bellinson here, which is uh, documented in an article of uh, Piedelin and uh, Gonchakov, then uh, uh, it was constructed by and by a Morgan here. So that's uh, basically what we know here. And uh, the talk here evolves around the following uh, theorem. And let, let me write it zero here. And uh, this theorem is an example. It's an example of appli application of the main theorem which is behind uh, is uh, that the, um, if you look at the simplest possible uh, um, uh, finitely presented group you can think of, so the group of two generators with one relation P square equals A to B A minus two, then this one is not geometric. And uh, so uh, you can say, well, yes, but uh, you will see what is behind. And uh, before I enter into the more precise discussion, let me say that so far, let me write like this. So far, the obstruction we knew, we're coming from two uh, angles here. One is, uh, because we know explicitly the fundamental group and uh, because uh, in some cases, and the only case where we know it is on curves, it is essentially three or to one relation. And the other is hot theory. And uh, to see that uh, this, maybe there is another way for this group, but uh, this, this group here and many others uh, will be uh, will come from a completely different angle of seeing of looking at the problem. It comes from the uh, from arithmetic geometry, not ultimately from the Langlands program. And both arithmetic, I will uh, I will argue later on, and geometric. So let me give a definition here and make immediately a remark. The definition. So if pi is an abstract finitely presented group, we can say that it has a weak integrality property. So let's say it's weakly integral if the following happens whenever there is a row a linear representation of pi complex linear representation of pi with values in g l r c which is irreducible and has finite determinant. Has finite order 
וצא דלתו. זה For any L prime number, then there is an irreducible representation, which I denote by rho lower L from pi to GLR of ZL bar inside of GL bar of UL bar. So of course it would be equivalent to saying because this is a pro-finite here. I mean, this group is finitely pre uh, presented, so in particular finitely generated. So it has values in GLR of a finite, uh, a finite uh, smooth, I mean, a finite uh, DVR over uh, ZL. And consequently it factors through here the pro-finite completion. And uh, let me denote here by rho hat L. And uh, so this is a definition here. So it has this weekly integral property. If uh, whenever we have an irreducible complex uh, representation, then we have an integral, let me call it integral by L, irreducible representation for all L. Sorry, Helen, but what is the relation between the GLR QL bar representation and the GLR? And the initial one. That is difficult. That is coming at the end of the section. But so, just at the level of the definition, I'm a bit. The confused. definition is whenever there is one complex irreducible representation of rank R and determinant rho of finite order delta, then for any L, there will be a rho L which is irreducible and I forgot to say. And determinants, thank you. Maybe this is what you meant. Well, of order delta. But there's no and other con it's conjugate to the in some no, larger. No, 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 no. It's a reason. It's a reason. You're putting no other constraint on how the like traces or on how Rowell relates no, to Rowell. No, I don't. Okay. So just I don't. Cases, but irreducible, right? Irreducible and the same, same order determinant. Is that okay? So it look, it's called weekly integral. Right? <laughs> <laughs> weekly integral. It's not a property of rho, it's a property of pi. Okay? Now let me make let me make uh, let, let me write the first theorem. If pi is geometric. then it is weakly integral. And uh, let me show you that it yields an abstraction. So uh, I, I should say before proceeding, but we are still in the introduction, so to speak, this implication here, pi geometric weakly integral, it's, um, it's an implication which relies on the Young's conjecture. Uh, which uh, has been proven, which essentially, I don't give the precise statement of the conjecture, but uh, it produces for us arithmetic local system, and we come to this later, sufficiently many of those, uh, at least if the residual characteristic here is L, uh, is at least three. It has been proved in these trends by that story using the geometric language program. So uh, let me now, and then I will start the lecture. Let me give you this example here. So now we have the, uh, so by, with the group I was uh, mentioning here, so let me call this group here pi zero. And then uh, if you take the representation here, delta equals one, and R equals two, that means we are looking at SL2 representations. Then Becker Broyard and Varjou uh, showed that there are two irreducible representations. Uh, 
which are conjugate, they are both defined over Q of J, where J is a primitive third root of unity. And, uh, and that's it. There are only two irreducible representations uh, over there, and then they are not integral. They are not integral by two. So if you like, I can write the matrices, but because time is short, or let, let me just, well, it, you can ask me at the end to write the matrices. So they are not integral by two. I mean, I, I L equals two there. L equals two, yeah. So they don't verify this. I.e., there is no row two as before. Uh, there, we defined earlier weekly integral, but that is integral. Is that different? Is this... they, are not, they, they, they are not integral. So weekly integral. The weekly integral was okay. So it's not weekly integral. And I mean, it's just a representation. Weekly integral is a property for the group. And here I look at one representation and it's conjugate. And those are not integral by two. I think it's a classical concept to say integral by two. Thank you for the question. This is only for L equal to two? Yeah. They are integral elsewhere, but not at two. So the conclusion is that uh, the conclusion is that this property here, so weekly integral property is an obstruction for a finitely presented prior to be geometric. It's nice. And let me make a remark before proceeding and showing you what mathematics are behind. Let me make a remark here. In fact, essentially, which is due to myself, also during the Second World War, is that the moment we look, so you see that this new obstruction deals with complex linear representations. Now, um, there must be much more obstructions. And let me show you why. Because the moment we look at complex linear representations, then because pi is finitely generated, it has values here in a GLR of A, where A is a ring of finite type over Z. But now, because it is a ring, we are nearly by a minuter here. It's even more than a minute, but uh, because uh, it's a ring of finite type, A has a ZL point. That means A embeds into ZL. So, so here, let me denote it by rho A. Of course, it, the knowledge of rho is the same as the knowledge of rho A because it's injective. And uh, now uh, we can pass compose here, here, but this is a, Finite group here. So this composition here factors through the profinite completion. But uh, so this means, in particular, rho is trivial on the kernel of pi to pi hat to its profinite completion. But there is this fantastic work of the Taro, like 30 years ago, or uh, I, I, don't, I didn't check exactly, the Taro, who showed that it is not the case that this kernel is trivial. In fact, this kernel is not always trivial. Consequently, to look for an obstruction which is coming from the theory of representation, and uh, in fact, that's a representation up to isomorphism, that means. Uh, um, local systems will always forget this important piece of information on which we know nothing, and I won't say anything on this. So this was a remark. So there is room for an improvement here. So now let me write. I believe it's Toledo, not Totaro. Uh, Toledo. Uh, thank you very much. It's uh, uh, thank you. 
Thank you for <laughs> thank you. I, I, and I apologize. Uh, so Coming is not here, but I should really apologize. Thank you very much. Just want to do um, something more precise about the, how big the kernel can be. Uh, pardon me? So you said it's not trivial, but uh, no, no, we don't know. We 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 know it's not trivial, and in fact, it's good. Uh, yeah, no, sure. uh, it, it, I, I really misspoke. Misspoke. I apologize. In fact, after uh, Toledo, uh, Janosch gave uh, other examples. So we have a bunch of examples, but we don't have much control on this kernel. Of course, it can also happen that it is injected. For example, if you have a, yeah, okay. So, um, so now uh, I am in the position now, now that I made this uh, preliminary uh, remarks here and uh, convince you perhaps that uh, it's interesting to look at the problem because it is really a new obstruction. Uh, let me uh, show, let me give you a weak form of the Jamin CRM, which is in the background. So let me write here CRM 2. And uh, so I should say here, I have written, because it's hard to read the board here, I have written all that uh, this lecture here is based on joint work with Michel Groschenik and Johan de Jong. It's not a work with three people, it's a work with Michael and myself, and a work with uh, Johan and myself. And uh, all I say here is can be uh, retrieved from our article, so there's nothing here. So uh, in particular, this CRM, so the examples here are in the article with Johan and myself, and uh, this CRM too here. So let me give you a weak form here. So uh, we start with X, smooth quasi-projective uh, over the field of complex numbers. And uh, we assume, so we did, we, uh, we write uh, by one of X, the topological fundamental group, and maybe I write it as pi, but now it's no longer an abstract group, it's really a geometric group here. And uh, we assume, like in our definition of uh, weak um, integrality, we assume that we do have a row with values in GLRC, which is irreducible. Which has finite determinant of order, let's say delta. And uh, we also assume, as it is customary uh, in geometry, thanks to CRM on the geometric side by Briscorn and, uh, and other people, and on the arithmetic side by Grothendieck, we also assume that the monotomy at infinity is quasi unipotent. And uh, we fix, we fix, uh, we, so that means because it's quasi unipotent, that means for any uh, branch of a good compactification of X, we will assign eigenvalues which are roots of unity with a certain order, and we fix this order. So fix, uh, let, let me write here. And uh, I'm coarser, there is a much more precise version of this weak form here. Let me just write N here for to say that the order of eigenvalues of monodromies at infinity. Are you assuming that you have this for one value of delta or for every delta? Well, uh, we, we assume, no, no, assume there is a row, but it has a determinant, I call delta the order. Okay, and then I, I fix some capital N and the eigenvalue, the order of the eigenvalues at infinity are all dividing N here. So I can be more precise, I can fix, yeah, I, can, I can fix the monodromies at infinity, but let me be coarse here. So um, monodromy uh, divide n. So then the conclusion here is that for any L prime number, 
Zen series Euro L, which is integral by L. With the same extra data. So that means the determinant here is going to be a folder delta and the monodromy is at infinity. We divide the order of the mon so that means that's going to be quasi omnipotent and the order of the monodromy is at infinity are going to divide L. So that's a, that's a theorem. And we can remark here that in order to go from this theorem, this theorem one implies the theorem which is abstract on groups here, which was uh, theorem two, I apologize, implies theorem one. And uh, as I said, I had already mentioned here, this is a consequence of De Jong's conjecture. But I'm not going to explain this. I'm going, rather, instead of doing this, I'm going now to uh, reformulate a tiny little bit, but still in a weak form, the theorem two, and then show you uh, what is behind in the proof. So now I have two strategies here. One would be first to use those bolts. Maybe we do that. So uh, what we do now is give the ideas of uh, reformulation, which is a bit uh, more precise than the theorem here of theorem two, but still in the, in the weak form. We, we can enhance the, the discussion fixing. It doesn't matter. So uh, we have here, and now we start doing first uh, um, arithmetic geometry. And in fact, we start with doing algebraic geometry because we know that those data here, so complex linear representation with a fixed order of the determinant and uh, order of monodromies at infinity, this is parameterized by the moduli space, which is called the Betty moduli space. So we fix R, we fix delta, we fix capital A. And in addition, we look only at the irreducible points here. So what we know is that the complex points of this uh, finite type uh, variety. Uh, so those uh, complex points here are precisely objects like this. It is not completely a fine modular space, but it's not too, too far. But in fact, more is true. It is really defined. So uh, when we take it's defined, if we forget the irreducible here, it's defined over a number ring. And uh, we can, we can uh, just take the, the, the risky closure of the irreducible locus here in characteristic zero inside of this, this scheme here. And uh, it is a finite type, as I said. And uh, that's the first information. And now the assumption we have here is precisely that uh, this mark here is dominant. That's the assumption in theorem two. And then theorem two, then theorem two is saying us, let me denote by epsilon here the, uh, the structure of this. Theorem two is saying us that this is subject. And now let me give you a test of the ideas which are in the proof. So maybe I should say I find them in the proof. So we have uh, these schemes here. We know really absolutely nothing on this scheme except that. Uh, um, Initially, before we start uh, putting some conditions, and uh, it is a fine. And uh, but because we do finite type geometry here, it is a case that the linear variance here, the notation by n that modifier, 
It is a case that if you restrict M, if you restrict the structure morphism here to uh, the underlying reduced structure, it is generic abysmus. So Johan likes to make a picture here. Here we have O, and the points are L here. And here we have nasty fibers with lots of uh, multiplicity. But because it's generic and it's smooth, there will be a point here, close point. Then we say Z, which is smooth. And uh, so Z corresponds to a representation here. Rho, let, me, uh, let me write F L M from the topological fundamental group, which we have denoted uh, simply by pi here, with values in GLR of F L M. But now we have. Uh, um, Rotenbeek theory of the fundamental group and of its various specializations. And notably, it says the following thing. In fact, one should go to the uh, expose 13 of Madame Renault in STA 1 to learn that which is not always very easy to read, then there is a specialization of homomorphism from the first, let, let me, before writing the specialization of homomorphism, let me go, uh, in fact, to Riemann. We have here the whole finite completion here of pi is the same as quoted in the fundamental group of the scheme X over C. And uh, this is here the Riemann existence theorem, which tells us this. Because uh, uh, Riemann existence theorem is telling us that uh, if we have a finite topological cover of, uh, let's say, an analytic variety, then it has an analytic structure. And uh, likewise, by the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence algebraically. So now we have again the specialization homomorphism here from this profile completion of the topological fundamental group with values in the 10 fundamental group. I, should, I can't say a word on the, the word 10 here, which is a quotient of the fundamental group of the mod p reduction of the variety for p large. So let me write here pi one ten of x and let me write here over f p bar x. So this specialization homomorphism here, so the ten thing is telling us that the ramification orders on the ramification order on any curve is going to be prime to p. And in addition, all the residual uh, represent, uh, re residual extension have to be uh, have to be uh, separable. But uh, but uh, Grotendieck is telling us more here is that uh, this uh, specialization homomorphism here is an isomorphism on the proper prime completion. So this is really uh, classical mathematics. This is SGA one here. So, in particular, when we look at the finite representation here, or representation with finite monodromy for P large, then this representation which we have here is going to factor here. So, now we have a finite local system on the mod p reduction geometrically over fp bar. So that's the second information. Now the third information is that now we have fixed our p. So if you like in this diagram here, uh, I, I try to imitate with my modest uh, uh, power here, uh, pictures which Peter Schultz likes, he will put the direction p here. 
So we had the direct, we were overseas here, we had the A directions and the coefficients of the, represent, of the local system, and now we have a P direction here, which corresponds to the multi reduction. So now we have some ways here. And uh, thanks to uh, Kotelnik. And uh, now uh, we do just uh, algebraic geometry. We have this, so this was Z here, that was our close point, but now we think of it as being living over a P bar. And uh, now uh, Z is absolutely irreducible. So uh, we have a beautiful deformation space of these residual representations, the construction of which goes back to Mesel. So let us do that. So we have the deformation space of Z. And uh, the deformation space of Z is a formal scheme over W of the coefficients here. So this leaves over W FLM. And, and then the, the Q and bar points of that are analytic local system, the residual representation of uh, which is precisely Z. And uh, now, uh, just algebraic geometry is going to tell us that this deformation space here is identified with the formal completion of M at the point C. And now comes the beauty of. Uh, so, and, and then there is uh, one thing we can observe is that. Uh, the moment we do algebraic geometry over FP bar, and we look at a representation, or if you like, a local system with finite monodromy, then it will be the case that this local system is arithmetic. That means it's defined not only over X over FP bar, but it's defined over X over FQ, where FQ is a finite field inside of FP bar. Why is that? It's because the monodromy is finite. So uh, you, if you, uh, the Frobenius uh, will move, will have a finite orbit moving this representation to another one. So power of Frobenius is going to stabilize it. So changing here, so now there will be a Q here with the properties that this, in fact, let me write here the FQ. So this is the property that means we may assume choosing the Q large enough that our finite representation is arithmetic. So in particular, the Frobenius is going to act on measures deformation space. But now we are precisely in the position where we can apply the theorem of, uh, of uh, Johann. In fact, this is really his theorem. He didn't prove the conjecture, but he proved himself the corollary of it. Is that as we were assuming that the underlying reduced structure is smooth, then it is the same. So, over W. Then it is a, so this W is in a residual characteristic L here. Then it is the same for Mesel's deformation space. But then uh, Johan proves that uh, if his conjecture was true, then it would be the case that this residual represents this finite representation here leads to an arithmetic representation. So there is, and let me write now, uh, if you like, uh, rho L on pi one x, but now over fq with values in GLR of Q and bar, such that the residual representation is precisely our Z. So with residual representation of well is isomorphic to our Z. So this is uh, quite uh, remarkable, of course, it's uh, very deep. And the fact that it's true, so uh, again, Johan proved that his conjecture implies this, but Gates uh, uh, proves that his conjecture is true using the geometric Langlands program for L at least three. 
So uh, we take here into discussion and at least three. So now, uh, now we are in the situation where we have an arithmetic local system. And of course, because the residual representation was irreducible, by the way, I should make a remark, whenever we have a local system, an eladic local system, the notion of residual representation is not well-defined. It's well-defined modulo semi-simplification. But if you assume that the residual representation is irreducible, it's well-defined. So, uh, uh, so now we have, and now because the residual representation is irreducible, then it's going to be the case that this arithmetic, eladic local system we just constructed thanks to Johanna, this one is also irreducible. And then when I say reducible, it's really uh, over uh, QL bar. <laughs> and uh, so, in a, because the, the theory of your hand, the deformation space was done on the geometric fundamental group on X over FP bar. In fact, this is irreducible also on X over FP bar. So, uh, but, uh, but it's also a point here in our deformation space. So we have kept our, uh, just by the very definition, we have kept our neighboring conditions, which were delta and n. Just by definition, because we are in the modular space, which parameterizes the subjects here. Now comes the idea of uh, Pierre de Ligne, which we have been exploiting with Michel Groschenik earlier on, in order to prove the conjecture of Simpson that uh, rigid local systems are integral, and we could prove it using this idea uh, under one condition, which I don't make explicit now, but uh, we use the same idea here. So now we are here, we have an arithmetic local system, which is eladic over this mod P reduction, of our initial scheme, and it is 10, and it has those monodromies at infinity, blah, blah. Now, in VEL2, uh, Pierre Dolin proposed a very deep conjecture, saying that whenever we have an arithmetic eladic local system, then the following should be true. So if we fix, we take any other L prime, so we fix an L prime, which could be L, and then we fix an abstract isomorphism from QL bar to QL bar prime. And those exist. They are, of course, not continuous, but, but, uh, but they exist algebraically. Now, if we were doing algebraic geometry over the field of complex numbers, we could always post-compose the representation of a local system by this sigma. So that would be a new local system. But now we have the, we do eladic local system, so we have this continuity condition. And uh, so we cannot post-compose. Nonetheless, it is a case that over a variety of a finite field, then the Frobini at close point are dense in the fundamental group. That's the Chibotarev density theorem. So in a way, it is enough to know the value of the representation on close point, on the Frobeni of close point, on the conjugacy, conjugacy class of Frobeni at close point. Now, you can still not pass compose because uh, the characteristic polynomial of the Frobeni at close point a priori has values in QL bar. So again, you have this continuity problem. But part of the Langlands program, uh, from part of the Langlands program, follows in particular that not only they are in QL bar, but they are in Q bar. So consequently, it makes sense to post compose. And that's the conjecture of Pierre de Ligne, which has been proven by Drinfeld um, in rank two, when he proves the uh, Langlands program in rank two over a curve, so over a curve and in rank two, as a consequence of the Langlands program. And then it has been extended by exactly the same method by Lafort, Laurent, in any rank over a curve, 
uh, and then by an extremely uh, surprising uh, work and uh, fantastic work by uh, uh, Trinfeld, extended from curves to higher dimensional geometry, and of course, higher dimensional varieties. And of course, here there is no length program, you have to do geometry. And, uh, and that's the reason why we assume all the way on that X is smooth, because this result is the existence of companions when X is smooth. So we do have companions, so there is. Uh, so let me denote by rho L the initial local system uh, over FQ, which was defined by rho L. So now we have, uh, let me call it as a twist here, rho L FQ, and this one is Q bar, Q L prime, Bar, I'm sorry, I think. So this is where we are, but uh, it is true that um, we can compute the determinants, the determinant has the same order, now by a theorem in fact of the line. So local conditions are, at infinity are the same. And, uh, and in addition, uh, because we, in fact, uh, another way to say is that the companion doesn't change the L function. We also compute that uh, it is irreducible geometrically. So now we can go back. We had this diagram here. So let, let me, uh, in fact, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, we had this diagram here. So, but uh, let me repeat it. So we had pi, so we do complex geometry here. We take the profile at completion here. So this is the, as already discussed, this is the etal fundamental group. Now we do the specialization. And then we think of it as being a sub of the 10 fundamental group, the arithmetic one over FQ. Now we produced this uh, L, um, I think the uh, L uh, FQ here. This is a QL prime bar analytic local system. We can go all the way back. And because it is an analytic local system, and those profinite fundamental groups have com are compact, of course, it stabilizes the lattice. So it's defined over Z n prime bar. So it corresponds here to a representation with values in Z n prime bar. So that's it. So that's uh, the end of the proof. Of course, we have to say we take P large enough and so forth. So this idea had been uh, developed by Michel and, uh, and myself. And uh, let me make a concluding remark here. Um, and is that just one remark? Okay, so that's a proof. So you see that uh, the proof contains uh, two uh, quite uh, heavy ingredients. One is the existence of companions, which relies on the arithmetic lines program. And the other one is a solution to the Young's conjecture which relies on, their, on the geometric Langlands program. I should say, we are not the first one who use the Young's conjecture in order to prove uh, something in complex geometry. So the Young's conjecture about finite field to prove something in complex geometry. Uh, to my understanding, the first one who did that is Vladimir Drinfeld, when he proved uh, or something, that Kashiwara's conjecture to the effect in complex geometry to the effect that the proper morphism respects the semi-simplicity of complex modules is a corollary of the Young's conjecture under the assumption that in characteristic over C, the D modules are 10, are regular singular. So uh, we are in the same world in some sense. So uh, to my understanding, he's the first one who really understood the power of uh, De Jong's conjecture in, uh, in complex geometry. So let me make a concluding remark here.
So the concluding remark is that uh, you see in, uh, in the proof here, which I sketch, uh, the proof invites one to pose a definition in complex geometry of a, now I'm sorry for the word weekly everywhere, of a weekly arithmetic local system, a complex local system. And I just say in words because it's technical, but uh, we have this complex local system. And then we say it's weakly arithmetic if for some identification of C with Q and bar for some L, then by the procedure I explained before, we will find a mod P reduction, which is arithmetic. So I just say in words. And, uh, so weekly arithmetic, that means, uh, I mean, uh, if I say it uh, loosely, if I make them topological QL bar local system, then they will, they will be an L, which makes it really pro et al. And then for P large, it's going to be arithmetic. So I don't know why, because uh, I feel in the whole part with the definition. But uh, the proof here, which we presented, uh, uh, shows that, uh, of course, uh, arithmetic local systems have been those which are, for some, L, I mean, for some L, they are arithmetic, so they are defined of a finite extension of the fit of definition of the variety. Those will be uh, weakly arithmetic, but there are more which are weakly arithmetic than those which are really arithmetic. But uh, the nice thing about this, of course, it's a sort of uh, intermediate definition. But the nice thing is that those in the, the, the remark here, is more than the remark, it was the earlier position here, is that those weekly arithmetic local system, I mean, just as a set of points here, inside of the C points of our Betty moduli, which we were dealing with, in fact, I got uh, abbreviated like this, they are uh, Zariski dense. So uh, it, it, it is uh, possible that one can use this dense subset of local system, uh, which are not, of course, they are not coming from geometry. They are not completely arithmetic, but they are partly arithmetic for some purpose here. So I stop here and I thank you for your attention. Questions? Uh, thanks for the lecture. Um, so are there uh, corresponding results when one allows X to have mild singularities? When one allows X to have mild singularities? No, uh, well, uh, uh, here's a clear cut answer. As you have seen, uh, the, there are two main ingredients in the proof, one of which is the existence of uh, components. So, uh, as I said, it's really very deep. And uh, of course, uh, if you have a curve, the uh, existence of companions on curves means on normal curves. The conjecture of Pierre de Ligne, initially in Bell 2, is uh, the existence of companions for normal varieties. And in fact, he has also some heuristic why he conjectures this on normal varieties rather than restricting it only on smooth varieties, but I'm not so competent to repeat his heuristic. But uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dreamfeld's fantastic proof going from curves to higher dimensional uh, varieties with uh, fantastic geometry and ideas uh, works only if the variety is smooth. So uh, here, our starting point is a smooth variety, is a variety in characteristic over C. 
And then we look at mode reductions for P large, where we apply Greenfield's uh, construction. But uh, if we have a singularity over C, we will still have, if it's normal over C, we will still have normal in characteristic P and not smooth. So we could not apply uh, Greenfield. So uh, you can say, you can of course uh, cheat, but that would be exactly the same theorem. You start with the normal variety and uh, you have a local system on it, uh, blah, 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 blah. But then the proof will have to go to the open where you know the existence of those companions. And that would be, a, that would be the weaker, I mean, you can, you forget the similarities, you go to the open here. It's a very uh, interesting problem to construct those companions on normal varieties, which are not smooth. There is a tiny little progress by a former student of mine, Marco Valetio, but uh, we are really um, seeing light years away from a complete solution to the problem. There is something, and uh, I can say in one word, the, uh, I mean, the main example to it, I'm not claiming that it's enough to understand this example, but this is a really a key example. You have a surface singularity, which is normal, and you assume that the desingularization is just a cycle of P1. So now, when you restrict your local, you take the companion on the desingularization and you restrict to each of those P1, because it is, it is trivial. Nonetheless, the monodromy of this cycle of P1 is not trivial, but it's not seen by the local Frobini. So that means this, this condition, your condition, is not seen on those cycles. Suddenly, you have a piece of the fundamental group which is discrete, which shows up in SG3, which has been amplified by uh, Peter Schultze and then Peter Schultze and Bargaard Pat in their pro fundamental group. But, uh, but uh, the uh, characteristic polynomials of uh, Frobini at close point do not see that. So how are you going to, to see that? That is a mystery. So I think we are really very, very far to understand the problem. Yeah. Um, um, so if we change the base point, we are getting like an inner automorphism. But I guess like just looking at inner automorphisms uh, is not very helpful because we can do the same with the with the finite CB complex. But what happens if we let's say that x is the final over q, and we fix the height of the point, and we look at the end, the inner automorphisms given by points of uh, up to that height, like a uh, is that helpful to... So what happens in which sense? So like, can, can we recover whether or not like a, um, X, like, a, like the final CV complex was algebraic? Oh, uh, okay, so uh, you correct me. I'm not entirely sure I understood completely your question, but you, you correct me if I go so on the track here. Yeah. Um, uh, the CRM here cannot be expressed as easy on the modular space of representations. And the reason for that, in fact, is the same, is that uh, uh, Pierre Deling's uh, conjecture. Uh, you see how it, it is done. You give yourself the characteristic polynomials at all close points of your variety, characteristic P, uh, over a finite field, I apologize. And then the theorem tells you that uh, there is a local system with those characteristic polynomials. But uh, the characteristic polynomials themselves, they are defined, uh, that's the value, that's the characteristic polynomial of the Frobenius at close point. What does that mean, Frobenius at close point? It means that you are able to map the Z hat coming from the Frobenius at the close point to the fundamental group of the variety over FQ. But that is not well defined because uh, you cannot do that for all points because the fundamental group, the arithmetic fundamental group, you have fixed one base point, which is your question. But when you look at the local Frobini, the only base point they have that some a choice of an algebraic closure of FQ. So uh, all what is defined, it's a conjugacy class 
of the polynomials inside of the fundamental group. So once you have realized that, <coughs> you realize also that you cannot construct a given representation. The best you can hope for is to construct a local system. That means the representation modulo conjugacy on the target. Okay, that's thank Helen again.